So now let's look at how we can stretch and flip our quadratic functions. So I have three functions written here. f of x is x squared, g of x is 4x squared, and h of x is 1 half x squared. The operation in between here is multiplying. Over here, you can go ahead and hit the pause to make sure that my calculations are okay, but I've just made a table of values for each of the three functions that I'm interested in. Notice that all of my y's are positive because in each of these I'm squaring the number, and so no matter if the x was positive or negative when you square it, it comes out positive. So let's plot these points and see what effect putting a coefficient in front of the x squared has. So first let's plot the points for f of x. So when x is negative 2, y is 4. When x is negative 1, y is 1. Zero zeros for all of them. When x is 1, y is 1 as well. And when x is 2, y is 4. Now even though I only have these five points, the parabola continues on off forever in the direction you start with. Now let's do the g of x in red. This time when x is negative 2, my y value is 16. Well my graph only goes up to 12, so we'll estimate that it's up somewhere around there. When x is negative 1, y is 4. So at that point I'm here. 0, 0 is still a point on that same graph. When x is 1, y is 4. Yes, there is symmetry there. Good for you for noticing that. If x is 2, we're up here at 16, so I'll just go up as high as I went before. So now to get a sketch of g of x, I need to connect all of the red dots and pretend that looks a little more parabolic than it does. Notice the y values are all above the black y values. So when you multiply by a 4 by a number greater than 1, it takes that basic parabola for x squared and makes it leaner, makes it taller and skinnier. So now let's see what happens if we put a 1 half in front of that x squared. So 1 half times x squared. If x is negative 2, y is 2. So here's my x equals negative 2. Here's my y equals 2. So there's that blue dot. If x is negative 1, my y value is 1 half. So this is going to be tight in here, 0, 1. So 1 half is going to be somewhere in there. 0, 0, we still have 1, 1 half, and 2, 2. So if that coefficient of your x squared term is a fraction, it makes a wider parabola. Now, so that's how we stretch it. Or in this case, when it's wider, we, we flatten it out. In order to flip it, we need a negative sign. So let's go ahead and add in a new function up here, k of x. And we'll let k of x equal just negative 1 times x squared, or just negative x squared. So to complete my table of values, you still square the negative 2 and then apply the negative sign. So in essence, I just need to change the signs of all of the y values I had for f. So to plot those points, if x is 2, y is negative 4. I'm off screen. If x is one, negative 1, y is negative 1. If x is 0, y is 0, there's a common point. 1, negative 1, 2, negative 4. So a negative leading coefficient flips us upside down. So I want to show you very, very quickly here on my calculator how that all works. So if we look at what I have input, I have y1 equals x squared, y2 equals 4x squared, and y sub 3 equals 0.5x squared. I'll go ahead and put in a y sub 4 here of negative x squared. And now I'm going to change my window so that I can see all of that better. And then when I hit graph, so there's my x squared, there's the 4x squared on the inside, there's the half x squared, and lastly, the negative x squared.